Welcome to Korea Beyond Courts. We're just going to wait for a little bit and see as people kind of tune in. If you're tuning in, go ahead and give me a comment. My name is Paige. We're going to be painting The Mermaid in the Sun today. So we'll get that started here once we start seeing people pop up. And a little bit about us. If you're just tuning in or just learning about who we are, we're Korea Beyond Courts. We do these live virtual painting events. There are lots of fun. If you ordered one of these art kits, it would have came with some supplies. You would have got instructions. It would have came with brushes if you requested them. Would have came with some nice paints. The paints that we use for this painting, all that good stuff. We'll see as people come in. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this Facebook Live up on my phone just so I can maybe see as people are starting to tune in here. Looks like we got four viewers. If you are just tuning in, go ahead and leave me a comment. Um, I'd love to see your name, seeing if you're seeing hi, then I know who I'm teaching to and who's popping in and when I can get started, so. Right. And you, if you happen to be tuning in and you haven't quite yet heard of our virtual art kits, you can find them on our website, cradlingcork.com. It's in our painting library section and it would be go under the to go art kits and you'll find various different options we do live videos and you can even order an art kit that comes with a video with it all that good stuff we do live videos every night so monday through friday we have a different artist and a different painting every night and you would be able to find that schedule on our website and again leave me a comment once you start tuning in i'll even show you here on my phone you can see I went to the calendar on our website. You can see that we're doing the mermaid today. And then tomorrow we're gonna have daisies, tulips in the boots, that one's really cute. I love that one, Maddie's teaching it. She does bingo sometimes. We got this nice little camper guy, a van, a nice little llama. That'll be me next week again, Monet. So yeah, you can, whenever you'd like, you can tune into our calendar on our website and that'll let you know what's coming up. You can stay in tune. Okay. Yay! Hi Patsy, I think you painted with us before. And if you're just tuning in, say hi. Um, let me know if you have an art kit, if you're painting with your own supplies, if you've even done a virtual paint before. I know I've kind of recognized Patsy's name before, so I think she's been here. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet. And as you can see in this corner over here, we're going to be painting the mermaid in the sun. What you're going to need to get started is paper towel, water, brushes. If you haven't yet, go ahead and sketch out your canvas. I'll bring mine up here. You can see I have my mermaid on there. Ah, this way, just like that. If you have that pencil sketch on there, go ahead and if you have a Sharpie or a black marker around you, go ahead and outline the edges of those pencils. That way we can still see that stencil once we start getting into the paint. All right. Oh, we got a uh, Sherry. Real quick. Oh, Sherry, um, if you're still watching, um, we do have our website. You can find those to-go art kits on our website. So whoever is tuning in today, they're either finding us just like you or they ordered a to-go kit which comes with a canvas, it comes with paint, it comes with brushes if you ask, and it also comes with a nice set of instructions on how to do the painting, just like that. Yeah. Our website is creativelyuncorked.com so you can find everything there if you want more supplies or want to know more about what we're doing. And if you even want to tune in tomorrow, we have another virtual paint along, so that'll be daisies. I really like that one, it's one of my favorite ones some more comments and again if you are just tuning in let me know say hi let me know if you're using the kit if you're using your own supplies all that good stuff we'll eventually get started here so I just want to make sure everyone's kind of tuned in that needs to be tuned in all that good stuff and again so today we're gonna be using black we're gonna be using yellow teal a little blue my favorite and white so if you have your own supplies, it's okay if you don't have quite just those colors. Any colors work since this is kind of like a contrast painting, so whatever you like. 
And again, make sure if you have our canvas, get it pre-stenciled out with a Sharpie. And as we get moving along here, I am going to, sorry, go there. I'm gonna switch to the overview just so you can get an idea eventually here of what my workspace looks like. I'm just gonna do 30 more seconds to see if anyone's tuning in as well, and then we'll go ahead and get started. And then Patsy, did you happen to order the art kit or are you painting with supplies of your own? I'd love to know. Oh, art kit, sweet, sweet. Cool. This may have a little bit of a 30 second leg, so if I ask you that twice, just know that I got your answer. All right. All right. So it's about almost 7.02, we'll get started here soon. Again, if you're just tuning in, let me know, say hi. Make sure you have all your supplies ready to go. All right, well again, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to Creative Land Cork to our nice virtual painting event. My name is Paige and we're gonna be painting the mermaid tonight. She's one of my favorites. Um, not because I have her hair, you know, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my overview. You can see my workspace. We're gonna give that a look-see here, just like that. So you can see right here. You can also, I'm gonna pop up in here as well. And then you can also see their profile view too. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I just wanna make sure again that you each all have a water cup, that took a while to say, paper towel and a plate. I have two plates sometimes because I get a little messy. The plate is just to be our palette, so I mix all of my paints on there. And then also if you ordered a to-go kit, it should have came with a instructions. So if you wanted to give that a quick read, before you dive in, go ahead and yeah, and it all has our links on the back as well. You can find us on Facebook, Craveland Court, our website is CraveLandCourt.com, all that good stuff. So yep, there's our instructions. And of course, today I'm going to be painting with the flat brush and I'm going to be painting with this guy. He's small. If you ordered new brushes with your art kit, you would find something like this. So you have various different sizes. Um, I may pop into this guy and use one of these like more finer ones, but the whole painting can be done with these two brushes. So, just so you guys are aware of the supplies that I'm using, I am using acrylic paint and I'll go ahead and re-show you my colors. I have white, blue, teal, yellow, and black. So I'm going to go ahead and uncap all of these really quick. Alright, and so our background, we don't need black just yet. We're going to be starting with the background. So I'm just going to get this set up. The top of the background, we're going to be using whites, then blues, a little bit of teals, all that good stuff. And I'm going to start with my plate. So after we start with our background or start diving into it, I'm going to put some paint onto my plate so I can do all the mixing on there. But before that, I'm going to go ahead and put my brush in the water just because the water and the bristles helps the paint blend a little bit better. So go ahead and wet down those bristles before you get started. And one of our rules that we have here in the studio is don't leave your brush out. Um, always put your brush in the water cup when you're not painting with it because if you leave it out long enough, the acrylic paint will dry on the bristles. And especially if you already just bought new brushes, we don't want to ruin those. So if you're not using the brush, put it in the water cup. Why it's there. So I'm getting water on there. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put some white on my plate. Brush it out a little bit. I'm gonna put some yellow. And put some blue. And again, as you're watching, just let me know if I'm going a little bit faster for you or if you need a little bit more time for that next step, or if you need me to clarify anything that seems like you didn't quite get it, just let me know. I will repeat myself as much as you would need me to. Let's see if there's any comments. Alright. So, for this painting, we're going to start 
from the top corner and we're going to work all the way down to the bottom corner. We're going to start with our lighter colors and then we're going to work towards our darker colors. So what you really want to do is we're starting with white and yellow up here in this corner. And I'm not going to go straight in with the yellow. I'm going to put some white down first. So I'm really just taking my water and the white and I am wetting down this area. I'm doing diagonal strokes across the canvas. And the reason I outlined my stencil with a sharpie is just because with it being black, you're still going to be able to see this stencil after you paint over it with that background. Um, so you'll be able to find it right away. And I'm going to keep wetting down this area a little bit. I'm going to go past where the white really kind of goes. I'm going to bring it down a little bit farther. As you can see, you can still see that stencil there. Once I get about half or like a third of the way, I'm going to go ahead and just take a tiny dot of yellow, barely any yellow. It does not take a lot of yellow to really fill up that corner. So I'm just going to dab it in. You can see I barely have any, might even take some off, barely any yellow on my brush. And I'm going to go ahead and just start to go back and forth like I did with that white. Introduce the yellow that feels a little bit light, so I'll take some more. And once I get that yellow in there, I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush. I'm going to take some white again, maybe mix some white and yellow together. And I'm going to blend back up into that corner. All this really does is it softens it up a little bit so that it doesn't feel too harsh. And then, as you can see, this area of white is still wet. So when I introduce blue onto that area, it's going to blend really well. As soon as the paint dries on your canvas, it doesn't blend as well. So make sure your canvas is always kind of still wet as you're blending. Sometimes you got to go a little quick so it doesn't dry before you. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white, again, and just a tad bit of blue. This blue is really dark. You can see we don't really get dark until this bottom corner. And we really don't want that. So I'm taking some blue. You can see it's getting pretty light here. And that's about the light color blue we have in that corner. So I'm going to give it a start. And you can see it really just glides on there nicely because that white underneath on the canvas is already wet. So I'm going to keep going back and forth until I get down here. getting pretty blue for me. And I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce some white at the bottom here. Because like I said, we always want to be blending into wet. So I've kind of wet down this area again and I'm going to do that same thing with the light blue. And one thing I like to say is um, let those brush strokes like breathe. So if you over blend and you're constantly moving your brush back and forth, the blue is going to blend all together with that white and you're going to get one blue. We want to have a little bit of streakiness going on so that there's a little bit of variety in that color. Different shades makes it feel like it's underwater. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of white here. I'm going to touch up this yellow area while it's still wet because I feel like I want it to be a little bit more blended than it is. Did a little bit of that. I want to take some white, maybe make this a little streakier again. you can really just keep working on your background until you get it how you like it. Because after we're done with this background, it's really just all details. It's throwing black onto the mermaid, putting some water in there, all that good stuff. 
And now that I've kind of got past this lighter blue that I like, I'm gonna start adding some darker colors. So again, I'm just kind of wetting that area down with a little bit of white. So the transition to the next color is like really nice. And I'm gonna mix some teal, some of that teal in with this blue. And it's okay to make a mess of your plate. It's perfectly cool. So I'm gonna take some teal, I'm gonna throw it up in this corner here. Maybe mix some teal with some blue to get a different kind of teal. And now that I got some like nice teal down there, I'm just gonna go in with some darker blue, maybe a little bit of white still, but I'm keeping it fairly dark. And I'm gonna go from the corner up into those colors. So I'm just gonna start in this corner down here. Now I'm doing diagonal strokes, but they're kind of curved almost. Fill in this area again. I'm gonna go through, kind of bring that blue through all of this blend. What that does is kind of bring some of those dark strokes up a little bit. All right, work with it a little bit more. I kind of want to up the vibrance of this teal down here, so I'm going to do a little bit, another pass on him. Comments. Keep moving here. And like I said, you're really just working with this background until you get it to a point where you like it. So eventually I'm just gonna give this a stop. I'm gonna let it dry just a tad and then I'll start working in with some more details. I think I'm gonna take some more white on my brush. I'm gonna lighten this up a little more. And yeah, I kinda like how this background's sitting. So I'm just gonna let it Sit for a little bit. If you have a second plate, you can kind of like wave it down a little. And just a little bit more about us. Like I said before, you can find more art kits on our website at Creatively Uncorked. We have several up there. We have like probably over 100 in the to-go kits area. So you have plenty of to choose from. This is one of my favorites. Tomorrow we're, we're gonna be painting daisies in a grass field. That one's also really cute. So I'm just gonna keep waving this down. You can also find us on Patreon. We have like four different memberships of different kinds of access to materials. So you can get like instructions or stencils or what colors we use, wood signs, like all of those good stuff. So if you wanna check us out on Patreon, go ahead and give that a click as too. You can see the links are in the comments. So if you ever wanna find a link easy, it's in the comments. gonna wave her down a little bit. I won't wait for this to be like completely dry because I don't need to, but if you want to go for it or if you have a blow dryer and you wanna speed up the process because you don't have patience, do that as well. But if you start um, taking the black in the small brush and you start filling in this mermaid here, you might get your wrist onto the canvas in the wet paint and we don't want that. Um, so that's why I just kind of let it set up a little bit and then when I'm painting on the canvas afterwards, if it's still a little bit wet, I like to support my hand with the other one and come from a top instead of like resting it down on the canvas to keep it stable. So just kind of keep that in mind as we go into this next step. All right. And the next step, we're just gonna be using our smaller brush. So like I said before, we're done with this bigger guy for now. So go ahead and put him in the water. You don't want the paint to dry on his bristles. Let her set up just a little bit more here. 
I think these events are also really fun. If you order an art kit for yourself, maybe think of like sending it to a um, family member. We ship all across um, America, so if you have a family member in Florida that you want to FaceTime and paint with, um, go ahead and order a kit and send it to her. We'll ship it to both of you, and then you guys can have a little painting date over the phone. That can always be fun. Or if your group of friends haven't been able to do a lot together because of all of the COVID as well, you can go ahead and order one and you all can paint in separate homes to a video. Wave it down a little bit. All right, so I am going to start in with this mermaid. I'm using my small brush. It's already pretty outlined for me, so I'm just gonna take the black and fill it in. So I'll just set the black here. And again, I'm putting paint, I mean, I'm putting water on my brush before I dip it into the paint. It just really helps it smooth a little bit better. I'm taking black and I'm just gonna go for it. And again, I'm kind of supporting my other hand so that I don't put my elbow into the wet paint. And however you like to fill it in. Some people like to go ahead and paint all of the edges like this. And then they go in and they like kind of fill it in like that. Or some people like to fill in the middle and then fill out the edges. Either way is fine. And I always like to say, don't really glob the paint on with black. It doesn't take a lot to spread far, especially if you have water on your brush a little bit. It's really like an ink, so it will go far and it does not take a lot of paint. If you glob on the paint, you might find yourself spreading it a little bit wider than you want. And we don't really want that effect, so don't take too much paint. Especially if it globs on, it doesn't really show up evenly. The paint will be thicker in some areas and all that stuff. And I like a nice even look. Another pro tip would be to not drink coffee before you do this step. <laughs> Otherwise, your hand might be a little jittery. And when I go in with the hair, I like to be just like really bold and confident. Make sure you have enough paint on your brush so that it's gonna spread. The more like confident you are with those strokes right here, the more effortless they're gonna look. So just put some paint on there. Don't be too um, tedious with it by like outlining these areas. Just go for it. Take that brush and just like swoop it like that and you're gonna get a better effect there as well. The brush can sense your fear. So just be confident with those strokes that you're putting on there when it comes to like details like this. And another area in the mermaid that I usually find people having difficulties with is when we get to the face. It, Like I said before, it doesn't take a lot of paint on your brush. If you overload the paint on your brush and you're going in to do like the finer details like her nose or the chin, it might over glob the paint on there and then her nose is way bigger than you want it to be or her head gets a little bit bigger because you're trying to like fix it. So just keep little amounts of paint on your brush when you're doing stuff like in her face. Just bolt out for that nose and ever so slightly add that chin.
And as you get to these edges, like I said, adding a little bit of water into your brush really helps that black paint go on nice and clean. If your brush is dry, it's gonna have like a dry edge to it with the brush stroke. And you don't want that. You want like a nice, clean, sharp finish. And just like that, our mermaid is filled in. All right, I'm gonna just make sure everyone has like a few seconds to get that mermaid filled in. But yeah, and like I said, you can find more events on our calendar at CreatorLandCork.com. You'll find our art kits, We'll eventually have some nice live events in the West Fargo studios too as things start to move along a little bit and get more comfortable and safe. So keep an eye out for that as well. All right. I am going to start into these weeds now. They look intimidating, but trust me, they are easier than you think. So I'm taking this small brush that I have right here Again, I'm putting black on my brush. I'm watering it down so that it, it glides really nice and I'm not overloading it. And I'm gonna start mapping out where the seaweed is. So I'm not gonna worry about all the organic parts. I'm just gonna put those lines in and mark out where they're gonna be. So I know there's this one going underneath where her belly is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw that in there. Just like that. Then I also know there's one like over here and they have a little bit of a curve to them. They're not like too straight. What's the word? Can't think of it right now, but like very strict and straight. They have like a little bit of give to them because they have a water current going on. This one's pretty crooked. And don't worry about the one in the corner here. We don't need to put a line for him. We want the seaweed to come off of the canvas and onto it. So it feels like our scene goes off the canvas. It's not just like stuck to this one. Let's see, I'm gonna grab this plate here. And I'm just gonna show you quick. So you can see it a little bit bigger and closer. So what I'm doing with the seaweed is I'm usually gonna put one on this side. I'm gonna make it nice and curly. And then I'm usually just gonna go in and thicken up an area. So right here, this middle part, I'm gonna thicken it up but keep some areas thin on each part. So each seaweed, seaweed should take like two lines, one line to get the shape and then a second line to thick it up. And then of course we have to put one on the other side and these ones usually wrap around just like that. Those ones shouldn't take too many lines. So just like that, it's simple, three strokes to make a weed, nice and curvy. If you really wanna like practice the seaweed on a plate or on your table or on a cloth or whatever before you put it on the canvas, go ahead. Sometimes it really helps to get that motion down before you put it on the canvas, especially since you've already been working on this. You don't want to like have to restart or anything like that. So again, I'm not overloading my brush and I'm just going to go put a nice curl in here. Keeping it thick in some areas. thin in others, and I'm gonna wrap it around. Just like that. I'm gonna add maybe some like little details right here. Some polka dots coming off. And this one's just a single one. So really just kind of play with where you're making it like skinny and then thick. And if you feel more comfortable, you can switch to one of these smaller brushes if you bought a new kit. Or if the kit you bought came with one of these guys, this technique works with either brush. Some people will just prefer one over the other. So do a little bit with both. And again, I'm just gonna put some like little dots or nodes coming off of this dude. And I'm gonna 
curve a little bit. I'm going to add some seaweed down here. Add some nodes again. Maybe throw one that's coming off. Make this guy a little taller. Again, keep playing with those like thickness. So I put one line down there. I'm gonna make it thicker in an area. Make it thin again and make it thick. And if you ordered a to-go kit, these may have been already pre-stenciled for you, making it a little bit easier. Just gonna throw a few off the bottom coming up in there. Throw some up here. And some people like to start from the left and go into the right, some start at the stem and go out. Whichever way you kind of feel more comfortable works. And again, if you're tuning in, just let me know, are you using an art kit? I'd also really love to know where you guys are painting from, if you're local, if you're in another state, all that good stuff. We also always love to hear like suggestions on what paintings you want to see on our calendar. We really love to hear from you guys, since you're the ones that we're painting with. So if you have any preferences for what you want to see on the calendar, what lives you want to see, what new paintings you might like to have, let us know, leave them in the comments. Just gonna add a few more of these guys. Because we're nearing the end of this painting, we don't have too many more details left, but just make sure the details that you do have left, you're really perfecting on there. Add a few more on. All right, I think I might be calling it good for the seaweed for me. And again, if you're just tuning in and you don't happen to have an art kit with us, you can find one at creativelyincork.com. We have plenty of options. Like I said earlier, I think we have over 100 options in our to-go kits. And then we also do our live paintings every night at 7 p.m. Each of our artists tune in on Monday through Friday to paint with you guys. So if you wanted to get in on one of our live paintings, go to our website, creativelyoncork.com, and you can look at our calendar. It should be on the calendar tab at the top. We're just gonna let this black paint dry for a little bit before we get into these splish splashy marks. Um, so if you wanted to take a second and check out our website and see what we have coming up. I know we're doing the daisy painting. Next Wednesday, I'm gonna be doing the llama painting, all that good stuff. And of course, if you wanna see anything pop up on our calendar, if you wanna see any paintings that you would like to see, let me know in the comments. We love to hear it. Again, I'm just gonna give this a quick second to dry. And of course, make sure your brushes are in the water when you're not using them. 
And I think the paint over here is starting to get dry so I can start with those nice bubbly effects. We'll give it a, just a couple seconds. You can always use this too. If we do all that white and stuff or we start dabbing on top of the black and the black is still wet, then the black will pick up into the white and then you'll get bubbles that are like black and we don't want that. But it shouldn't take too long for these tail to dry since it's acrylic. And then I always love to see if you guys finish your product or finish your mermaid, go ahead and post it to our Craveling Corked page or our Craveling Corked Live page. We love to see the final products. And if you're watching me from the main page of Craveling and Corked, we do have another group called Craveling and Corked Live um, where we, you get access to the videos that come on every night as well if they don't happen to be on our main page. And if you like to paint along to those virtual painting events, we actually send out art kits. So you can go ahead and place an order and we'd have it out by 6 p.m. so that you can paint it by 7 p.m. the night that we're painting. So I know, what is it on Friday? We're doing tulip boots. Those ones are really cute. Maddie just painted them. I suggest you go ahead and check it out on our website because those, it's a pretty cute painting. Kind of has the same color scheme going on. All right, so now that my black is dry, I'm going to take the big brush again that we started from the beginning and I'm actually going to dry him out. For this technique, we're just going to be putting paint on the bristles. So I'm just making sure that they're nice and dry, not too wet, because we're not going to be swiping with the paint, we're going to be dabbing with the paint. <laughs> All right, just reading some comments. So my bristles are dry, they're not like too pushed together like how the paint would let them be. And all I'm going to be doing is I'm taking the white and I'm only dipping the tips of the bristles into the paint. So I'm not using, like, I'm barely using any paint, like zero almost. And I'm putting the tips of them in there. And as you can see, I barely have any on there. And as I dab, it gets this nice, like, bubbly texture technique like that. So that's what we're looking for. If for whatever reason you have a natural sponge at home, that does the effect as well. But this brush does it quite nice too. And go ahead and practice that like water on your plate before you put it on the canvas. That way you know what it's doing, you know how it's going to react when you put it on there. Test it out. And all I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to start dabbing some bubbles in here. They seem to work their way up onto her tail up here. So I'm just going to kind of map that out. And it's good to kind of make them more condensed in one area. As you can see, I'm getting a little bit brighter there. It's a little bit subtler down here. Just to have a little bit of variety of bubbles. Otherwise, if you go too crazy with the bubbles, this whole corner is going to go back to white. We don't want that. We want the bubbles to look pretty cool. Do we just have Kathy? Hi, Kathy. All right. So I'm just bopping these bubbles on there. And like I said, it is, you know, you can get carried away with the bubbles too. So don't overdo them. We have one more step with them that I think is really fun. Everyone loves this step. I'm going to keep it a secret until the end, though. I'm just going to slightly tap on top of these tails. This really makes it look like she's like shooting up in the sky, which is fun. The hard part about the bubbles, I can usually tell with people painting this one, is they don't really want to paint over what they already did because they really like the tail or they really like the seaweed or the background. But it is important to kind of keep just going with your painting, especially if you're like scared to try to new technique like this. Just dive in. Maybe you'll like it. You don't know. And you can always come back and paint with us more. You'll never get good at a technique until you kind of keep trying it, give it a chance. So I'm going to go a little bit more with these bubbles. And I might play more with them in a bit, but I'm actually going to go ahead and introduce the next step, which is the fun one. And I'm going to grab a plate. I got a water droplet on here. We don't want that to settle. 
And this is called a splattering technique. It's one of my favorites. All you do is you take water from your cup and some white. And we're gonna start to make kind of a watercolory pool right here. So it's like kind of one part water, one part acrylic paint. And once it gets nice and pooly like that, we're just gonna dip our brush in it. And there's two ways you can do this. You can either dab. I wonder if you can see them. You can start to see those little circles on there. And or take the brush, dip it in that water, or you can use your fingernail and kind of flick it on there. This makes pretty small dots, but it's really cool because it makes smaller dots than what we would be doing with the dabbing technique. If you have freshly painted nails, don't do the flicking technique. Go ahead and just take the water and the paint mixture and just kind of flick it on there. And you can start to see all those like nice little dots popping up. The more water you have in your paint mixture, the bigger the globs are gonna be. So if I try and add a little bit more water into this paint mixture, you're gonna see bigger globs. You can see that dot right there got a little bit bigger. Just gonna keep dabbing. And you can do this as much as you like. You can splatter this whole painting if you want. Be careful, sometimes it comes back up and gets in your glasses. And just to be a little bit crazier, I'm gonna do just a few darker blue spots. I'm gonna dab those guys on there. I like to do a little bit of dark blue. And yeah, you can keep dabbing as you would like, or you can call it finished, all that good stuff. I really love to see your guys' final products. So if you did finish the painting and you painted along, go ahead and post it to our Craveland Cork Live Facebook page or just our Craveland Cork page so everyone can see it, because I would love to see your final products. I'm just gonna dab a little bit more with this guy, and I think I'm gonna call him good. Just add some emphasis in some areas. whiten it up a little bit. All right. And you can sign your name on there if you would like. But thank you for painting along today. I will be here next Wednesday with the llama, who is my favorite painting. He always ends up with like a hat or a mustache or a monocle or something. Someone adds something spicy to it. And if you finished the mermaid painting, go ahead and post it to our page. I'd love to see it. You can find more events at our Craveland Corked website, cravelandcorked.com. And there's lots of painting kits on there lots of different stuff. Go ahead and check it out and I'll see you next time.